Hey everyone, good morning. Welcome to the Teach Better Today morning show where the Teach Better team gets to go live at 7 a.m. Eastern every single stinking day, Monday through Friday. We are here to start your mornings. I'm so appreciative for those of you who have put the Teach Better show into your daily routine. This is how you wake up in the morning. Maybe you're going on a walk while we're chatting. Maybe you're driving to work. We love being a part of your morning. So please throw your hellos in the comments. If you're listening over on Teach Better Talk podcast, take a screenshot. And we have a great, great, great educator who's joining the show. I, I hope a lot of you are already connected to Katie, but if you're not, then today will be your lucky day. So we'll be right back. Hey everyone, good morning. I hope your coffee is slowly kicking in. Katie Kinder is in the house. And if you are not connected to her, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Katie, how are you doing today? I'm good, Ray. How are you? We were just chatting about the kids and the busy life of educators and how we have to how the kids want to eat every night. Every night it, they want seriously. to have dinner. It's so true. I feel like if I, I I like am totally on the extreme of this, I understand, but I live for like order groceries that get delivered. Like I live for it. Right. It is everything Maybe. when you can do that. When you have time to sit down and order it from your phone, sometimes you just have to go to the store, go around and ugh. I think I think I've figured it out that I will spend more time at the store being unproductive and I leave very stressed because I hate grocery shopping versus if I take three minutes and do it on my phone, my theory is I save time. I don't know that it's true. But that's my well, well, same. And then I just get all of the things I don't need. Like, oh, I need this new kimono at Walmart and also maybe some new earrings and also maybe the so then it's way cheaper if I do it. Yes. <laughs> You know what? I do think though everyone needs a kimono from Walmart. So I don't know that that was a bad purchase. I mean, let's just talk about that. My husband is an accountant and so he can't really help but make spreadsheets like in his sleep, you know? So he likes to look at all the purchases and he's like, man, our, our grocery bill is really high. And I'm like, yeah, look at this new kimono I got. <laughs> It's totally, it's totally fine. So it's funny, uh, Katie, I think it's interesting because I obviously get to be a part of the show and I get to be on a lot of episodes and that's such just so nice that our team has, you know, forced us to do this, but I'm usually live with Katie Miglin and Katie Miglin is a troublemaker. So if anyone's listening on the podcast, they've heard me say, Katie, 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 but you're not Katie Miglin. You are better. Do you mind introducing yourself to our community in case they're not connected to you? I don't know if I'm better, but I also, she's a troublemaker. I want to be friends with her. Uh, yes. Hi, everyone. I'm Katie Kinder and a longtime educator, mother of two. I've been speaking, doing PD. I've got a couple of books out there and I love the teachers. I want them to stay in our noble profession. And I know it's been hard. I've taught post pandemic. I know the things. And so I am out here for, for teachers. I love it. I love it. And I'm so excited to dive further into that as we get into the show. You were just on Joshua Stamper's podcast. Yes. And I not only did I listen to the episode, which shout out to Josh, you everyone should be listening to his podcast, but especially go listen to Katie's episode. But also he totally is cool enough where he got your glasses and like posted a picture with fabulous blue glasses. And I was like, what? I was like, I, I think that's the coolest way to promote a great episode ever. I think everybody who ever features you should do that fun like marketing. They start, it's like an unintentional logo. I sent those glasses to him in the mail. I will send you some too. I'll send, oh you, my my, I'll send you my book and I'll send you some glasses. But I, I would just be like standing around at a conference, like waiting for my session or waiting. And people would just be coming up to me like, are you our speaker? And I'm like, I am. And they're like, it's your glasses. And so we have just, we have leaned into it. So now I like go and like 
throw these fake glasses out to my audiences and they hashtag and win books and free PDs. And it's so fun. That is the best brand ever. I think you are, you are knocking it out of the park. Fun blue glasses. I feel like you, I mean, I guess you're right. It's totally your brand because anytime I see them, I think of you and that's, I guess the goal. And I think it's so neat that you have created this like super fun way to stand out, but also you just look really nice with the glasses on. Also, you look really pretty. Oh, thank you. You know, I had to get an extra pair because the other day my husband almost smashed them in the couch. Mm. And I'm mm. like, well, this isn't good. And he's like, you got to get on there and order another pair, backup pair. <laughs> they, so um, I have like readers, like glasses I wear when I'm reading emails or, or anytime working in the computer and it's a minimal prescription, right? It's like a one reader. Sure. It's like no big deal. But, um, but I was exploring a few months ago, people who watch the show frequently will know I was exploring a few months ago if I could pull off fun glasses because I have like just the generic, like I put them on and I don't wear them out socially. And I bought a few and I wanted people's opinion and I was shot down by this community. I just want you to know, Katie, you are, you obviously knew how to pick the right color because nobody liked, nobody liked my glasses. Yeah. Haters. <sighs> That's not fair. <laughs> I'm sure you looked awesome in them. Well, thanks, Katie. Did we just did we just yours. freeze? Ooh, let's see. Did we freeze? I can see you just fine. Yeah. So if you're in the comments, anybody needs to tell me, can I just can I wear Katie's glasses? Because hers are so baller. That will be the Listen, color I go for. The answer is yes. <laughs> the answer is yes. So good. Katie, so outside of education, can you tell us a little about your background? What did you like originally do before you got into education? Was education always the dream? Tell us a little mm. about how you went around that road. Well, so my mom is an education rock star in the Tulsa area. So growing up in her light and in her shadow, <laughs> she kept, she would say to me all the time, like, I think you're a teacher. I think you're a teacher. And I'd be like, oh, you don't know me. And because, you know, petulant teenagers don't listen to their parents. And so I went into public relations and I was working in the nonprofit, nonprofit sphere. And I was working for MDA, Muscular Dystrophy Association. And my best days were when I would pull up to a high school and got to work with the DECA kids around the state because they are a national sponsor. And it took me, Ray, it took me two full years to call her because I'm kind of scared of my mom still. And <laughs> and I just said, you're right. And she was like, I told you. <laughs> and so I went back and I got my teaching certificate and I stepped into a ninth grade English class with zero training, none. So I just became a study of the game. Like I... I was like, well, why am I having classroom management issues when I'm sitting in straight rows and reading out of the book? Like I was taught like, so then I just became like, I was just became a sponge. I would just get online and look at things. And I mean, this was, you know, 16, 17 years ago, second, but I would go and watch teachers. I would just do my own PD. And I just started changing like gamification and, I got a hold of Dave Burgess's book around 2012 and just started creating these experiences for my students that just last a lifetime. And it's just so meaningful. And we have fun. Like I, I believe that life is fun and learning should be fun. Gone are the days that we sit in straight rows and are silent, you know, yeah, absolutely. I love walking into those classrooms that have such dynamic, different experiences for students and have volume. Quiet mm -hmm. classes make me uncomfortable. <laughs> right. I have to, even if like, let's say we're writing an essay, which is as an English teacher, that's part of your job. So we got to do that. And so right. I have to have instrumental music on like, or an instrumental like beach waves or something, uh, because that makes me feel more comfortable. And if we're in, like, I have to make it look like Starbucks so we can be in like, you know, <laughs> the coffee shop. The we're we're, I'm like, we're in college guys. Let's write our essay. 
So even even then, I want to create those experiences. So for sure. And there's not like it's like group activities, group gamification. Like there are procedures in place. I teach middle school. Come on, like we got to have procedures or it'll be chaos and and kids really don't want it to be chaos. That's scary. So we are going to have procedures in place, but I still think it should be fun. We should be having fun. I love that. Yeah. Some of the best ways that I've seen teachers embrace having fun in the classroom is when behind the curtain, there's all these different supports in place and, you know, classroom management strategies and everything. But to the students, they're getting the enjoyment of not necessarily seeing all the work that went into the preparation of this activity. Yeah, for sure. And it's all wrapped around curriculum and power standards and all of that. But that can be done without a worksheet. Like we can do something better than that for our kids. And so I really stand by all of that and make it fun. I love it when it, when a student is like, oh man, it's time to go already. Or no, it was lit in here today. Like, thank you. Thank you for that. (laughs) For sure. You are so, so cool. Okay. So I will say, I think I lean when I'm doing any sort of work, like writing an essay, I'm thinking when I'm, when I'm working, I lean into soft jazz. Like that's my go-to. So if you want a little saxophone and your instrumental music, maybe that's your vibe, but anyone listening, I would love to have you add in the comments, like what are your go-to songs or genres that way I can steal. Cause I do, I do get sick of certain things if I'm doing that like over and over and over. So maybe we'll take some recommendations here. There's also like an instrumental pop on Amazon music now that I kind of like. So yeah, all that could be good. You know, as we get into more of the work you do now, Katie, the day-to-day support you give to teachers and obviously the books, I want to get into that conversation. So we're going to transition here into our team talk so we can get more into that education conversation. the Teach Better Today morning show, we are getting into our team talk section, which we like to say is the chips and salsa of the show. This is where we get to get into that fun conversation. Of course, Katie is all about fun. So this is a perfect segment to have her in. Katie, this is something that I know we can talk about anything in education and take this conversation however we want, but I'd really love for you to share your biggest passion here. Do you mind sharing with our community, like your soapbox topic that if they take nothing else away from this episode, what do you hope they remember? Well, I hope they remember that I love the baby teachers. I know some of them don't want to be called baby teachers, but I love my new teachers. And that could be that could be anything. That could be, it's your second career and you're walking in as a baby teacher at 55. Okay. And so I want to love, I want to love them. I want to train them effectively. I feel like no shade on any else, on anybody's college or PD, but if you haven't been in the classroom post pandemic, you really, things have changed. Our kids have kind of magnified some of the things, their tech addiction, their, and I I have seen things post-pandemic that I never saw pre-pandemic. And so I think that our teachers need that training. This is going to happen. What are you going to do? This is what I would do. And I do. I, I collect the baby teachers and I have them all over the nation. I will get a frantic email in the middle of the night, like, this happened. What should I do? What would you do? And I'm like, okay, this is what I would do. And I really, really love, I love them because our kids deserve good teachers and our kids deserve our teachers to stay. 
and our our teachers are leaving. And I I think it's a lot of times it's because they don't have the proper training. Right. And that's so challenging because the only way to better this field is to consistently evolve, evolve and mentor and support the incoming educators. I do have to know, when are you no longer a baby teacher? Because when you say you love to foster that baby teacher, I'm nervous. Like, like, can I still be a baby teacher? I'm still yes. learning so much. There's still so much I don't know in education. Like, is there a graduation age that you're like, bye, Ray, you've been, you've been around too long. You graduated. Uh, <laughs> I really like baby teachers in the first five years. Like, I think that after you get your first five years under your belt, you're kind of like, oh, I think I got this. But I'll also say in the same breath that we always have to be studies of the game. Always. Like I would never stand on a stage anywhere and say that I have it all figured out. I don't. None of us do. We, Our kids are evolving and we should also evolve with them and for them. And so I just want to be a support and to love on them. Well, yeah. and I love your focus being to support educators to really foster that strong foundation. Because you're right, after that fifth year, you really do have some concrete to stand on. And while you're mm -hmm. still being a learner and you're still building in your learning, you know, toolkit, you're you're a hundred percent correct that there's so many of those fundamental skills mm -hmm. that we need to ensure those teachers not only learn but also have the tools to improve on what they continue to learn as they move through those years. So I love that that has continued to be your focus. And if anyone listening here is a part of that new teacher, baby teacher mentality, I, I think that they need to connect with you. Come to me. <laughs> uh, yeah, awesome. no, I, I um, have walked into some schools where they're like, well, I don't need PD because I'm, I figured it out. And I'm like, well, none of, none of us have, right? We should want like PD that is meaningful, practical strategies that we can use tomorrow. And that's all of us. Like we always have to be like pliable. And, uh, you know, I watch, I watch other speakers. I watch other PD people, like just trying to constantly get better. Isn't that what we should be doing? hundred percent. So is the book something that new teachers might enjoy, or is this something that everyone in our community can benefit from? Well, I think everyone can, but I wrote it for, for new teachers. I wrote it for, this is what happened. It's part memoir, part strategy, part how do we do this? And I wrote, it's called Untold Teaching Truths. I released it in 2021, and I just am really proud of it, and I it's a lifeline for some teachers, and so... It is for any teacher, really. Get ideas, stories, all the things. But it is the book that I would get in the hands of every baby teacher in the world. And then just this past March, I believe, we released Hallway Leadership, which is about servant leadership in the hallways of your school. So you can't affect positive change as a principal, as an instructional coach, from your office. Like you have to get out there and see the people and they have to know you and they have to feel seen and loved by you, just like what we do in the classroom with our kids. And so I, it's a compilation of these amazing people that I find myself around. And I wrote it with two of my good friends and we're really proud of it. Hallway leadership. I've got some teams in the, I think it's Michigan who have they bought it for their district, all their leaders, and they're doing a book study. And they have come back being like, this is really good. And so we are really proud of it. Yeah. Hallway leadership. I, I love your two books that you've put out. I've actually listened to you speak on them a few times in different yeah. podcasts that you've been featured in. And I think it's really interesting. Your first book that I know is for those baby teachers. Every time I hear about it, I'm like, that is good for every single educator to have on their bookshelf. And here's my, here's my push to anybody who's not yet convinced. First yeah. off, it's going to reset all of those foundational skills that you already learned, but yeah. let's reestablish them, bring them back to the forefront of your mind and make sure that those are solidified. And Hey, if you have any questions, maybe you'll learn something, right? That's great. Yeah. But then it's perfect for you to pass to the next new teacher in your building, right? Like this is a book that you can even feel success. Like, Oh, 
I've graduated out of this concept and you pass it along to the next baby teacher. This is a really, really good practice. I love, Katie, that you can do the same thing with the leadership book, right? Maybe yeah. you're a very well-established leader. Go read it, reinforce those skills, feel proud of all the things you've learned. And then when you get that new dean or you get that new coach or you get that new assistant principal, pass it along. That way they can reestablish those foundational skills. So good. Yes. Yes. I love that too. And I, and I have had people come up and purchase too, like, oh, I, I'm going to read it, but also I'm mentoring a teacher, so I'm going to get it for her. And it's just fun. And I will give several copies to an administrator for their baby teachers. And it's just a, it's a tool. I, I have one teacher who's just marked it all up and made all these notes on it. And then she gave it on. And then the teacher that she gave it to was, was messaging me and was like, oh my gosh, what? <laughs> it's just really fun. And I think it's important to know as well that like all of our stories really matter. Like our teacher stories, our life stories, our kids' stories matter. And that's really how you love people is that you get their stories and you listen and you, uh, so I think that's always really important too. Hmm. So, so good. You know, Katie, when I wrote my first book, I brought it to my students and had them color a page, um, each student, like with their name. And I feel like any book that is a book that you would pass to the next person, there should be some tradition that you take like yellows and oranges and pinks or like light colors. So you're not ruining the words and you get to like document a page that you were a part of reading this and you pass it to the next person. That'd be yes. such a fun art project. That is fun. I love that. Tell me the names of your books. Oh, so um, 2019, I wrote Teach Better with the amazing Jeff Gargas, Chad, Chad yeah. Orshowski, and Tiffany Ott mm -hmm. with the team. And uh, 2020, just before your first book in 2021, uh, we put out Teachers Deserve It with Adam Welcome, which was super fun. So it's always good to have books Listen. that you can pass around and share. Adam Welcome is one of my coaches and friends. Like we talk all mm -hmm. the time. <laughs> He's precious. He's awesome. Yeah. Yes. That's he's a really great cool. motivator. Yeah, yeah. And he's written some awesome books. I know Kids Deserve It is phenomenal. And Power Our Girls is great. He just has endless. So he's another shout out to another person. Oh, All of fun. you should be adding to your network. <laughs> yes, 100%. He's great. <laughs> so Katie, speaking of adding to our network, I want to make sure our community here within the Teach Better family, now that you've been on the show, you're officially family. And we need to make <gasps> sure so that... Oh, yeah. We need to make sure that our community adds you to their PLN. So they're constantly going to learn from different things you are putting out into the world so we can be better every single day. Do you mind sharing your contact information, maybe your website? I know they'll go grab the books, like all that stuff. So we can make sure we stay connected. Okay. Uh, you can find me at katiekinder.com. I'm Googleable, which is always fun. <laughs> and you can find me at Twitter now called X at Katie Kinder one. And then on Instagram at untold teaching truths and my emails out there as well. Shoot me an email, slide into my DMS. Come on, baby teachers, vet teachers. We need every last one of us. Don't we? We really do. Ugh, so powerful. Please go connect with Katie. And if there's anything you take away, I know that she already gave you a challenge, but I hope it's that Katie is so approachable. Do not be anxious. Send her a DM. It's not weird. Social not media weird. has, yeah, social media has opened this door for us to have access to amazing people. Katie is one that you definitely should have no stress reaching out to. She's very, very welcoming and sweet. So definitely send her a message. Katie, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. This was fun. And I actually do feel a part of your family. So I mean, are you Absolutely getting your guests you are. Ever ready for me when I come visit? What? A hundred, a hundred percent. I'm already, I'm already painting the the room to be the color of your beautiful glasses. It's going to be perfect. I can't wait. <laughs> we'll do like an exit wall. All right, friends, have an amazing rest of your morning and we will see you tomorrow on Teach Better Today. 
Hey, Teach Better community, thank you so much for joining the Teach Better Today morning show every single weekday at 7 a.m. Eastern. We have so many resources for you outside of this live stream at teachbetter.com, including blogs, podcasts, and professional development that will bring our team to your school. Wherever you are listening from this morning, please make sure you are sharing and celebrating the incredible educators in this world. And hey, if you are listening over on a podcast to Teach Better Talk, We would love a five-star review. (laughs) The comments are always so entertaining. (laughs) We'll see you tomorrow.